We're leading some followers to meet the Phantom of the Open, and we're finding the X rating in deep water. I'm Van Connor. And I'm Bex Perfect, and this is Off Screen, your seven day guide to everything movies. Boom. Groovy. Welcome to Off Screen. The sun is shining, the skies are blue, and it is the perfect excuse for you to hold yourself up in a dark room and watch some movies. We have got an action backed bunch of movies uh, for you. We've got one of the movies which brought, for a very short time, Ben Affleck and Anna Diarmas together in a romantic way, not just on screen, but off screen as well. So we've got that to look forward to. And we've got a few, we've got a few interesting uh, offerings for you as well. So uh, yes. it's a real mix today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real eclectic mashup this week, Bex. Mm. Um, should we put our best foot forward, shall we? And start oh with, uh, and start with followers, which wowzers. Um, okay, first of all, it's very rare. I have to apologise to you, Bex, but I feel like I owe you one for this one um, because had we had a bit more foreknowledge on what was coming out this week and the release schedules not being what they are, this would not have been included in our main roster. We would have featured no. Master. We, we would have either had Fresh or Master, both of which we're going to talk about in this streaming section anyway, so we'll give them a little bit extra attention. Um, this is meant to look like it's being shot for YouTube, although it seems to have been made by people who I don't think have ever used any of these platforms. Because it, it seems to be so weirdly outdated. Do you know that Nativity sequel when they started doing flash mobs? And you were like, yes. it's 2016, isn't it? It's like 2016. Why are we doing flash mobs? That was like a decade ago. What's going on? But it's like the people who'd made the movies were so old that they had only just discovered in popular culture the existence of flash mobs. That's what I feel like with this one. It's about an aspiring influencer, but he's specifically a YouTube vlogger named, mm -hmm. I think he's... John T. John T. Yeah, John, John T. T. Played John by T. Harry. Craig. John T. Craig. Played by Harry Jarvis. I don't know who Harry Jarvis is. Is he someone? I don't know. Um, no, and... you probably won't hear who Harry Jarvis is moving forward he, he either. Can't... <laughs> Coffee. You can't advertise for sure. And basically, his 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 influencer life is is, is fledgling. However, he has like five followers until um, his his um, his house, his student house, is seemingly besieged by paranormal activity. Which is is it being staged? Is it not? Who's to tell? But the idea is that every time one of these ghosts reappears, his follower count goes up. And do you think there might be a downside to this? Well, we'll let this very compelling trailer guide you along. That idea. There are fierce phantoms in this place, and we're gonna get them on camera. What are you gonna say next? We should split up and save for clues. You take it over, bro. But we need to get to two million followers. We need more ghosts. I'm not even gonna give this the kudos of saying that this is a national film and television school attempt at making a feature length movie. Oh, no, it doesn't no, even no. have the caliber of being anything beyond an A-level style attempt at making a feature film. And I'm going to and that sounds incredibly harsh and I appreciate it and I very rarely kind of go into this much depth but it's an all-round turkey. Mm. It is from the way it is shot, the way it looks and feels is amateur. The acting is awful and actually shame on you uh nina wadia for being in this film mrs I, I masood was, what are you going, doing i was going down that in my head i was thinking that just like really really i mean i yeah. i know i i, I know the, the practical realities of this business and paycheck rolls etc but, but it course. is that but it is that and you know for a fact as well that she's I mean, i've not even looked this up but she will be a she'll be featured prominently on the poster this is this yeah. is Anthony Head in Sideshow last week. Oh, you know, it's, it's yeah. that to a T. But also the graphics. So when they do show ghosts and whatever, it's basic. <laughs> exactly. From that clip, you will have heard them all going John T, John T, John T. That that is all you're going to get. It is a student film at best, yeah. right? And mm. a bad one at yeah. that. But also, let's not forget Tanya Burr. <laughs> YouTube, real life YouTube makeup artist, or I wouldn't even say that. She used to work on the counter in a, in like a Debenhams or something. Then started in 2008 posting video tutorials on of makeup. She, and hmm. then is suddenly one of the biggest YouTube stars alongside like Zo, the the years of Zoella and Jim Chapman and right. things like that. So, Going down that route, now, given that I given that I didn't know who she was prior to this. 
Is is someone who knows who Tanya Burr is the intended audience for that for this movie, or would they no. now be too old? Because I would imagine oh. they'd have to be too old. So, look, Tanya Burr, let me explain this thing to you. Hmm. She was, as I said, this YouTube star. So, firstly, have a look at the edit, love, and show how they're portraying YouTube. But also, I would just say that... that that along those lines as well, she's then decided that she's now no longer really a YouTuber and she's a, she's an important, serious actress. Aren't they all? But she is pick but she is picking films that sit on that B C D list of British movies that will mm. never get your never get your stature up to anything that is credible. And she's not in it very long, but she ha- has a terrible American accent playing this like psychic influencer. And do you know what? It just means. As we'd expect from the whole movie, it's all god awful. That's all it well, is about this. Don't waste your time. Unfollow. Unfollow it. Yeah, Unfollow us. If there's a dislike button, click the dis. Don't unshare it. If there's an unshare, if there's an opposite of share. Um, anyway, so let's go on to something a bit more positive. I promise you, this is so much more upbeat, Bex, because I know you haven't seen this mm-hmm. one. Uh, it's the Phantom of the Open that's out this week. <laughs> so the Phantom of the Open is a new movie from this. This is going to sound deranged. But bear with me. From Craig Roberts. So you know Craig Roberts oh, who started from submarine. submarine. Yeah, yeah. Craig Roberts, he's sort of an, 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 an actor director on the rise now. He's getting around there quite prominently. He has made a Maurice Flitcroft biopic. Do you know who Maurice Flitcroft was offhand? No. The worst golfer in the world. That's who he was. That was his official title in the 1970s. He was a 46-year-old man who got made redundant. He basically just worked on, you know, I think he worked uh, in the in the docks. He worked in, I think he worked in the in the mill, in the steel mill or on the docks. Um, he got made redundant when he was 46. His kids had reached a certain age, and he just decided to have a go at golfing. He was going to open was it the uh, the British Open. He was going to enter the <laughs> British Open. Goes to a qualifying round having effectively, without meaning to, or so he alleges, lied his way in. He claimed to be a professional and associated with his local club. He was neither. He'd never played a round of golf successfully in his life, went to the British Open and scored the highest, uh, the highest score anybody had ever scored in history. Him, the worst golfer in the world. They then <laughs> blackballed him and cut him out of the sport entirely. He would then spend years putting on costumes, donning disguises, faking identities, lying and scamming his way as often as he could back into professional golf, all under the guise that he just wanted a fair shot. That's all he wanted, honest. But he was terrible. And I'll I'll let his appearance, as played here by Mark Rylance for the biopic. So remember, he's been to start at 46. He he worked his way up to Mark Rylance's age. Um, Basically making his case on British telly that he truly is not. And whilst he's doing this, by the way, he's missing every shot that he's taking. Now, you feel that you should be let back into the Open, is that right? Yes, an Open Championship, you know, should be open to everyone, uh, like the FA Cup, you know, give the, give the little teams a chance. Oh, now, bad luck. Uh, I think this ground is, is sloping. Well, uh, everybody does say that this car park is a bit lopsided, so... <laughs> well, I think I'd best hand back to the studio. Thank you to the fantastic Maurice Flickcroft. The world's worst golfer. No, I'm not the world's worst golfer. I don't agree with that. Do you know what? I I immediately thought, and I don't mean this in that this other movie about this other person means that he was the worst person ever because it's quite the opposite, Mm. but I feel like the sentiment or tone of this movie may be alongside something like Eddie the Eagle. There it is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. This is Eddie the Eagle meets Happy Gilmore with Mark Rylance in full BFG mode. It's sold. Right. So, yeah. So, and it's and it's even got as if it needs a cherry on top after that pitch. It's even just got this inventive, playful sense of storytelling. Like his discovery of golf, because he literally he's never played golf in his life. Literally sees golf on telly one night for the very first time. He's forty six and, and he decides, oh, this is what I need to do with my life. This is depicted like the fantasy sequence from the Big Lebowski. You know when he's floating amidst <laughs> the bowling pins and the Viking yeah. horns. 
exactly like that, but Craig Roberts is a, a much more British version of that. It's great for supporting cast, top tier, Sally Hawkins, when Sally Hawkins not adorable in any supporting mm. role. She's great in a lead role, but you know when she's in supporting role, she's always in the off yeah. that just adorable sense that she has to work with. And Reese Ifans in full grisly, curmudgeonly snot mode, which is just a blast. Absolutely go and see The Phantom of the Open if you can this week. It doesn't matter if you care about or like or have any interest in golf. If you want a good time, just a, a little guy sticking it to the man, a cheeky chap romp, go and see. If you liked Eddie the Eagle, this one's for you, Bex. Welcome back to Off Screen. We're keeping you in a dark room with the big screen offerings this week. Um, and we're going, well, if, if followers didn't make you scared enough at the thought of it, maybe our next movie will just keep your plane scared. It's called X. It's in cinemas from today. It's rated 18. And I hear it's a little bit of a horror. But this is the thing with this one, because there is some uh, minor buzz around it, because it's Ty West, who is something of a fan favourite. He's kind of a schlock director. Kind of a schlock. Mm. Most of his films have gone to D, you know, direct to DVD or to digital over the years. But he does seem to have his fans. And this is him, seemingly, with like uh, the highest budget I can remember on any of his films. Anyway, certainly the most premium production. Set in 1979, and it takes place around the idea here is... It's during the emergence of the home video boom and specifically the immediate critical success of Deep Throat, the immediate financial success, sorry, of Deep Throat uh, within the adult film industry. You've got a porn director played by Martin Henderson. Remember the guy from the Toxic video, the Britney video, Toxic? Remember oh, him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was a thing in movies for like a couple of minutes. They gave him a movie <laughs> called Talk that was meant to be like Fast and Furious with motorbikes, but it just mm -hmm. didn't work. And then um, and then I think he turns up on Grey's Anatomy. I think that's where he's been hiding for the last decade or so. I think they that's just tucked him to away hide. on... <laughs> they tucked him away on like Grey's Anatomy or something because they just couldn't find a vehicle for him. Anyway... He's now reached that sort of that, that sort of sexy middle age kind of kind of point. So he's he's playing that string. He's going for a bit of that uh, John Schneider kind of appeal from the uh, from the late nineties. Um, and he is the porn director who hires a remote farmhouse to ten take his troupe of porn actors and film and aspiring uh, filmmakers, basically the cameraman slash director and his girlfriend, played by Jenna Ortega. But more on that in a second. And they go to you know a remote farmhouse and it's like a guest house that's on the back of this crotchety old couples you know like a really frail really gray almost wrong turn like frail gray pale kind of old couple and they're creepy off the bat but the whole thing is that the presence of this crew who are you know let's not forget making porn on location cinematically that's their gimmick remember this is 1979 the presence of them starts to stir things within the old couple. Things that very swiftly will lead to what I can only describe as a grindhouse bloodbath. A bloodbath that will, of course, contain the likes of, as I say, Martin Henderson from the Britney video Toxic, Jenna Ortega, female lead in the recent Scream reboot call, Britney Snow from Pitch Perfect, and <laughs> last but certainly by no means least, Kid Cuddy as a Vietnam vet with, let's just say, a real desire to just hang out. I've seen you sneaking a few long peeks at Jackson over here. No, I, I wasn't okay. looking. You don't mind none. She's right. I don't mind. No offense. Everybody likes sex. It's a guess. We're just not afraid to admit it. Queer, straight, black, white. Old disco. You know why? Because one day we're gonna be too old to f and life's too short, if you ask me. Roger that. The fact of the truth of the matter is, we turn folks on, and that scares them. And they can't look away neither. That's right. We're like a foxy car wreck. Mm -hmm. Well, it's quite a departure from uh, <laughs> Pitch Perfect. <laughs> Um, oh, oh God! And then some. Like you, you wouldn't believe that that's the same actress because I would have assumed that she was quite a, uh, quite a, an uptight and very prissy person when it comes to certain elements of this movie that she very, very clearly is not. And I say that well, having I like it when you watched her on uh, Nip Tuck many years ago. I just figured that she sort of had that phase and grown past it. And no, no, Britney Snow is still very up for that. Like this is, this is. 
a wild ride, Bex. This is... Oh, wow. I, you remember when uh, when the pandemic was, like, first coming, that first summer of the pandemic when we were all getting into drive-through cinemas for five minutes? Yes. This yes. would have been perfect. Like, this, <laughs> I mean, this would have been, pardon the pun, pitch perfect. Oh, my God. I adored this. This is grisly over the top. This is if you were someone who really enjoyed uh, Death Proof, uh, Planet Terror, mm. the whole Grindhouse thing, but you want something that's a bit more authentic. Like, that felt like it was just, it didn't have to be good. Like they were just they were just doing it to be naff because it didn't have to be good. Part of the charm was that it was bad. This is, well, let's do that, but let's make the movie actually enjoyable and good. And it works. It's a good time. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it has yeah, fun good. sending up conventions, the the, the 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 effects, the cinematography of it all really, really, really lands. I really enjoyed this. It's called X. It's in cinemas. It's being shown quite widely as well from today. I can't recommend it highly enough. Do check it out. Nice. I will do. Um, now let's move on to why well, I gave you guys a little bit of a, a tip on this as uh, the movie that brought... Anna Diarmas and Ben Affleck together, not just on screen, but off screen as well for a very short period of time. Um, it is the return of the sexy psycho thriller. Uh, <laughs> it is on Prime Video uh, from today and it is rated 15, so not too X rated, but it's steamy enough. It is, of course, deep water. This is the story of... Um, <laughs> A couple, uh, the guy is a guy called Vic, who is, he invented a chip, uh, a microchip, which allows mm. drones to, uh, well, I, uh, to, I suppose, locate where they're going. He made a fortune so, doing something. He's a, he's a sort of semi-retired tech bro, isn't he, really? Yeah, he's a, yeah. a semi-retired tech genius. Mm. Um, so he's got a load of money. They live in this house in kind of this sort of suburban... American town. They have a really sort of extensive group of friends that they hang out with quite a lot. Or they have a child. But the thing that makes this kind of sound a little bit different is that Anna Diarmas's character, so uh, Ben Affleck's wife in this, her name is Melinda. She's very promiscuous. And the thing is, is that although she's very promiscuous, it doesn't seem to matter to Vic very much. And he just lets it slide. And that in some ways, is a recipe for disaster. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> this is amazing. Melinda kind of has the palate of a 12-year-old. Our first date, I took her to the best restaurant in the city and she ordered mac and cheese. Yes. It's like he was ashamed to be with me. No, I just realized you were ordering off the children's menu to save room for alcohol. You see, Vic never drinks. I drink sometimes. Sometimes I think he's not normal. Because... Normal people can let go. You wish that I were normal, Melinda? My God, all the time. As if I were normal, I don't think Joel would be over here having dinner with us. So Joel, of course, there would be her lover. It's a very mm. weird setup. Now, this is uh, written and directed by Adrian Lyne, and it is uh, Lyne's first uh, feature-length film in 20 years. It, I mean, his, his previous effort before this was 2002's Unfaithful. Um, mm -hmm. with, was that Richard Gere and Diane Lane, I think? Yeah, and I, I think, think so. Prior to that, I can't remember one prior to that. There's, I can see a I know thread here. <laughs> there's, uh, there is Indecent Proposal as well, uh, Fatal Attraction, most famously. Um, um, and, and, you know, uh, nine and a half weeks. Adrian Lyne's work has always centred around a theme of let's take an, uh, you know, a, a white-knuckle thriller and set it not within actual life and death states, but within the confines and, stra and, and, and shackles of a relationship structure. And you look at something like Fatal Attraction as the obvious kind of example of that, or Indecent Proposal. Indecent Proposal, what's the thriller element there? It's, it's mm. their relationship. You know, that, that's what it is. And it's the same thing here. This is ratcheted up ever so slightly. In again, the same way that Unfaithful had started to tiptoe towards as well. And it is very classically Linian in that way. Um, Affleck, old hand at this, obviously, having done Gone Girl, we've, we've seen him do this kind of thing before, and we know he can do it. Well, he does it exactly as well here. The script is not as likable or as rounded or as accessible as something like Gone Girl. But that is something that does seem to be inherent to a movie by Adrian Lyne. Now, yeah. to be fair, Anna Diarmis does seem to be aware of that because it's a very icy, very unapproachable character. And, and it's completely in keeping with the script. But that's a script that you have to be aware that you're walking in on that director in order 
to, to be in any way acclimatized to. If I was not aware of who Adrian Lyne was and what his body of work was, I would have felt about this largely how I felt about the first 20 minutes, which was, what the hell is the point of any of this? I really enjoyed this. This kept mm. me incredibly engaged throughout. The criticism I have about this mm. is that it's not steamy enough. It well, needed it, to be more I, steamy. Yeah, that's the accessible part, isn't it? By making it more outwardly, you, you're, you're inviting the audience, you're making it more, more accessible for them, you're making it more inviting and, and giving them more accessibility there. The, the problem is Adrian Lyne's films are about intense relationships, but you are always slightly at an arm's, uh, at an arm's distance, mm. even during sex scenes. It's particularly mm -hmm. as, we, as we see here, for instance, even during sex scenes, there's how, how, for instance, they feature lots of graphic nudity, but they're quite unsexy at yes, the same time. Yes, yeah. So she walks in when she's dr like yes. drunk and there's the babysitter there and she's, you know, immediately mm. takes the top half of her dress off. I really enjoyed this because yeah. I felt like... I felt like you don't know who it is. Right. <laughs> yes. Vic is. Vic is really brooding. He's got a weird snail house, which is kind of his obsession. He's really quiet and dark and conserved, uh, conservative. And then you've got Anna de Armas, who is in your face trying to get a rise out of you. And I don't mean that as an innuendo. I mean that in the sense that, you know, literally she is there to just... She's a temptress and she is there and you don't know what her intentions are other than to really pee off... Uh, ben Affleck's character. Genuine question, and this is completely in keeping with the, with the theme of the movie. Because of the snail house connection, do you think if they'd made this in like 1992, you could have made this entirely with the cast of The Hand That Rocks the Cradle? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Rebecca Bay, everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and it, would anyway, have been, it would have been iconic and it would have, it would have stood the test of time. I think in this day and age, we're just a little bit too over this genre to really yeah. appreciate it. But for someone who grew up watching things like Hand mm -hmm. That Rocks the Cradle, I actually really, really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Welcome back to Off Screen. Now we're taking you from the big screen to the small screen. And we've got your seven day guide of all the best movies that are on your telly box. Starting oh, with one of my favorite Danny Boyle movies. Uh, it is on 9 p.m. on Five Star on tonight, in fact, 28 days later. Killian Murphy, before he became Tommy Shelby, much, much before that, in fact, he was wandering the streets of a post zombie apocalyptic London, semi-naked, pretty much naked, whilst he's trying to work out, out what the hell, he had his ass out, out. yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was in a medical gown, uh, uh, wondering what the hell is going on. I love 28 Days Later, mm. it is so beautifully shot, it couldn't be further from followers if you tried, and it is, there is just so many amazing sort of acting sequences in this, incredible portrayal of the whole concept of zombies, but also just the filming in itself, there's a beautiful mm. rain sequence where you're following the drops and it just, oh, it's amazing, I love it. It's, it's, it's funny that you, you draw that connection with followers as well, because 28 Days Later, you know, when it came out, was groundbreaking for its use of digital filming yeah. for its use of di digital photography in, in, in its camera work and and it was because it looked like nothing else when it came out like the, the, there'd been zombie movies and zombie movies were slowly coming back onto the rise but 28 days later by virtue of how it looked i think would would go on you'd see a lot more of it in the work of michael mann starting around this time mm, as well mm -hmm. so i think it's the same yeah. year as ali and, and man starts to play around with the then emerging digital uh, camera tech and and it's it's interesting when you when you look back on 20 years later that it does hold up it has become such an iconic part of the imagery of 28 days later a, do a movie i absolutely adore and also is it brendan gleason i love brendan gleason in this movie yeah uh, well. yeah, but, uh, oh. yeah 9, and 9 also um yeah naomi harris is in this as well um oh, no really, with really a very distinctive pass. haircut doesn't she? she has that very yes. spiky up i love her haircut yes, um so let's good. go on then to uh, one that i think did this win best picture then it did and also jack, jack nicholson won uh, an oscar for this as well you have done very well van this week i have to say you have picked some of my favorite movies like ever <laughs> in here <laughs> Okay, Apologies. without even telling me. Um, so As Good As It Gets is one of my favourite movies of all time. Um, Helen Hunt, Jack Nicholson, he's the uh, he's the kind of very grumpy, like, uh, I think he, what's the word that if you don't want to leave your house? It's, he's, a mis um, he's, a, he's a misanthrope, but he has uh, an extreme form of obsessive compulsive disorder, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does, he does, he does. 
Yeah, and so it kind of really sort of limits his life. And Helen Hunt is, um, yeah, sort of has to his come waitress. to the bathroom. She's his yeah, waitress. His waitress. That's, it. That's waitress, all she is but... to him. She's his waitress. But and there's just, this other, they yeah. form this bond and it's, it's oh, it's absolute masterclass when it comes to acting. It's br- beautifully brilliant. I think this is in 1997 or 98 that it, that it picked up all the Oscars. It's um, 97, it's released late 97, comes out early 98 in the UK and wins the Oscar around that time uh, as well. Because the following year, I think, is when we start getting to like Shakespeare and Love winning and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. And, Jack Nicholson on fine form. This is uh, 9 p.m. on Great Movie Saturday Night. It's an all-time have a listen. You have no idea what your work means to me. What does it mean to you? That somebody out there knows what it's like to be in here. Oh, God, this is like a nightmare. Oh, come on, just a couple of questions. How hard is that? How do you write women so well? I think of a man, and I take away reason and accountability. I love this. Uh, Script by James L. Brooks, um, and written and directed by James L. Brooks. Uh, Fantastic movie. Um, I will say as well, um, do you you recognize the lady's voice in that clip, incidentally? Is it, um, is it, oh my God, who married to Judd Apatow? Um, No, no, it's not Leslie, it's not Leslie Mann, no. You're all, you're along similar lines though, very sort of distinctive voice, yes, I can see why you'd go there. It's Julie Benz uh, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Dexter. She was oh, Dexter's okay. wife in the first four years of... of, yeah. of and Dexter. I think Greg Kinnear's in this as well. I, he is. My memory serves me right, yeah. And, of course, Cuba. Good old Cuba's in this Cuba, as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, then, Sunday afternoon, have I got you or what, Bex? Oh, my God. Like I said, like you've, you've literally picked like some of my most nostalgic, fun, favourite movies. So, Wayne's World, Wayne's World, party time, excellent, is on your telly box. 4.50pm on great movies. I mean, great time of the day to watch this. You can mm. look at uh, Wayne's extensive collection of hairnets and, and name name badges. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is genius from Mike Myers. Actually, coming up in the in the time in which Mike Myers is coming back onto our small screen as well yes. with uh, yeah, pen, the Pentavirus. Uh, Pentavirus. The pen, the yes. Because it's it's based on a gag from So I Married an Axe Murderer. And it's one of my favourite moments in any movie ever. I don't know why. There's something about Mike Myers doing the Pentavirus bit in, uh, in So I Married an Axe Murderer that just reduces me to hysterical rubble uh, every oh, time brilliant. but yeah um i think this has just fallen into the roster like they've just gotten the rights or something to show this because they've, pro- they've programmed it in a lot and i'm glad they've done it this week whilst he's in trailers again but uh yeah, yeah. 4 50 sunday afternoon what a great time to watch wayne's world and enjoy alice cooper in one of the all-time great <laughs> musician cameos yeah. um we just talked about michael mann a couple of minutes ago in relation to uh, danny boyle on 28 days yeah. later um his 2005 i think effort collateral is our pick for monday night on nine o'clock on channel four uh, this is uh, tom cruise cast against type as the hitman who hires hires slash threatens his taxi driver jamie fox um to drive him around for an entire night through la as he offs a list of targets one by one as they start to increasingly cross paths with uh, the life of Fox himself within the film. Um, Hell of a movie and weird crossover with Jason Statham's uh, character from the movie Cellular, if you're paying attention as well. It's a really weird thing that I, 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 no one can explain it to this day, but this exists in a cinematic universe with the movie Cellular starring Jason Statham and Chris Evans. That is a real thing. I dare you to look it up. Uh, Tuesday night then, one I know you've seen. BBC Two, 11.15. This is just a cute and charming one to cuddle up in bed with. I think, Bex. What do you think? Educating Rita. Educating Rita. Not only have I seen this, I actually starred in the play of it as well, playing Rita. Yeah, I did. I did uh, at my school when I was uh, 17. So So I have a real She's a hairdresser, isn't she? Is she a hairdresser in this? I can't remember if she's a hairdresser. Julie Walters. Yeah, Julie Walters and Michael Caine, right? And Mm -hmm. Michael Caine is an alcoholic professor. And basically, he gets hired by Julie Walters to kind of help her prep for higher education so she's not very well educated and she's yeah. got, it's a bit of a so, sort of a my fair lazy in a I was way say, so he effectively has to grade work thusly i would like to talk about this that you sent me oh yeah yeah yes yes well now in reply to the question 
suggest how you would resolve the staging difficulties inherent in a production of Ibsen's Peer Gint. You have written, quote, do it on the radio, unquote. Yeah. Well? Well what? Well, I, I know it's probably quite naive of me, but I did think you might let me have a considered essay. Yeah, well, that's all I could do in the time. You know what? Quite well deserved, but both Michael Caine and Julie Walters both got nominated mm. for an Oscar for this. And also, it was not up for a nomination for Best Writing um, on a Screenplay, uh, Adapted Screenplay. So, uh, yeah, really, really great film. Uh, 1984 was when it was all nominated for the Oscars, and don't let that put like, you was, off. Go and watch it. Because it's the brilliant. exact age of me. It was released in 1983 <laughs> as well, so it makes me feel like I, I know exactly how old this movie is. It's terrifying. Yeah. Um, Speaking of old movies, let's go with the original blockbuster for Wednesday yes. night, shall we? ITV4, yes. 9 p.m. If you can get in the bath and watch this, it's always a good time. Jaws is on ITV4. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Hang on, is that the which sequel is that? Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Must be the second one, right? That must have been the second one, yeah. Because the fourth one is this time it's personal. Draws the revenge with yeah. Michael Caine, where he's not seen it, but he has seen the house it bought. Um, incidentally, this week, this past week was the 89th birthday. It was the 89th birthday of uh, Sir Michael Caine? So you know, happy birthday, yeah. the big chap. Jaws, uh, Jaws. Uh, Jaws doesn't actually have a, a strap line to it. I think it just says the the terrifying motion picture from the terrifying number one bestseller. I suppose they didn't know what to expect. On it, but quite, quite quite possible, but uh, anyway, so uh, quite possible. So uh, Jaws, nine p.m. ITV four on Wednesday. You gotta watch. If you've never seen Jaws, what are you doing with your life? Watch Jaws. I, I, I know it. adult men that I've had to show Jaws to for the first time because it can't be tolerated. You cannot not have seen Jaws. Watch Jaws. You've got a chance there. Um, I've got one that you might not have seen there, Bex, to close out the week. And you may have seen it. If you've seen I it, you'll probably, you'll probably have loved it if you saw it. So, it's from 2012. It's a remake of a classic, a cult classic 80s uh, horror, uh, horror rump. It's shot, fr uh, it's shot POV. So you, it's, you know, it's literally through the eyes of our central character, who is played by Elijah Wood as a reclusive serial killer in contemporary downtown society. It is the 2012 remake of Maniac. Here's a maniac on a date having a panic attack. Where do you think this will end? I hope you don't mind. Mm, I like a man who takes control. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So, how long have you been using the website? Um, like six months, maybe? But this is my first dinner date. Usually it's just for drinks. Though I can already tell that you are a breath of fresh air from the jugheads that I do with at the bar every night. Oh, it's like really easy to get an overdose of testosterone in that line of work, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, why don't you have a girlfriend? I... Are you okay? I'm just... I yeah, just... One of my favourite things to reference in any movie ever is uh, Q Lazarus's Goodbye Horses uh, and its inclusion in the movie Silence of the Lambs. Um, famously done to perfection by Kevin Smith in Jane Silent Bob's Strike Back. Um, but then, a decade later, equally effectively in this absolute banger of a slash em up um, Maniac, 1110, on the Horror Channel, Thursday night. You won't have seen anything like it. Absolutely don't miss it. If you're a fan of Elijah Wood, it's worse. Because, again, like it's, it's one of his very, very dark performances that he likes to turn out every five years or so. And if you know what those are like, you know mm. how scary good he is. Um, so, Maniac, absolutely check that out on the Horror Channel. <laughs> it's rightful home. Can't recommend that one highly enough. Welcome back to Off Screen. So you have seen everything on the big screen, everything on the small screen, and now it is for all of that stuff that's on the in-between. This is your streaming DVD Blu-ray section, and we are kicking off with what is available for you on Prime Video as of today, and it's called Master. 
Yeah, this this one I was really blown away by because I, I this had a look to it of being like one of Shyamalan's kind of lesser projects, just from the marketing. Um, mm. Got to see this though, and boy, did I not know what I was in for. This absolutely would have been front and center of this week's show, along with Fresh, had it not been for certain release schedules, uh, schedule issues. So uh, this is uh, Mariama Diallo, written and directed by Mariama Diallo, stars uh, Regina Hall primarily, uh, also alongside Zoe Renee. What you've got is it's centers around the role of the master who is effectively like the house mother at a, at a university uh, sorority house or, or halls of residence mm. if you know what I mean basically, basically a, a, a dormitory like a house mother of a dormitory right. uh, she's played by Regina Hall who is the first African American to uh, uh, African American and African American woman I think as well to serve in the role and is being used as a sort of token figure piece in the marketing and depiction of this university, which has something of an institutional history of flagrant racism. You also then have the dormitory itself, which has this legend of its first African-American student having committed suicide there some decades earlier. You then also have a new incoming freshman student who happens to be African-American, who's played by Zoe Renee, who gets assigned the same room and starts to experience disassociation not uh, not so much just with race but also as regards her treatment at her treatment in academia itself which she then also has she also can equally ascribe as the, as the institution themselves ascribes to her academic prowess she could just as equally ascribe to the racial climate of the university and all of this is coming together through these series of incredibly creepy events that point in the direction of something otherworldly something supernatural but something just as equally plausible to be nasty and human at the same time it is effectively get out ghost college if i'm being mm. reductive about it it's brilliant and i cannot for the life of me understand how this wasn't given the full jordan peele level go and see this in theaters this is actually important go and see this regina hall is absolutely tremendous in this uh that the mm. writing is sharp it's clever it's poignant do you remember how the father knew to balance its psychological thriller elements with its dementia thriller elements so that for the longest time you, you, you could just as easily have taken the film on either merit. This is yeah. pulling the same kind of trick and it's phenomenal. I thought this was terrific. Yeah, and also not to be mistaken with the fanta the equally fantastic, if not more fantastic, The Master with the Philip Master, Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. That, that, yeah. One that, that one that bears no resemblance whatsoever to that very trendy, very rich Hollywood-based uh, religion. No, no, not at all. No. Not at all. No, 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 no. PTA wasn't right about that at all. No. <laughs> let's, let's get fresh then, Bex, because I think we finally get to get fresh this week, don't we? And we got Disney Plus. So this is the yeah. uh, Daisy Edgar Jones, Sebastian Stan... Uh, movie that is horror dating meets horror is that how we kind of look at it right well I can only describe this as it's it's something like promising you remember when you watched promising young woman right yeah and it got towards yeah. the end and you wished it had just been a bit more of a horror movie than it had been about something where yeah. is it yeah this is what happens when it's not about the thing when they go and do the horror movie bit instead so this is the other version of promising young woman at times daisy edgar jones is you know the singleton who starts dating the seemingly perfect guy played mm. by sebastian stan in full sexy dreamboat mode like he is he is properly going for the 90210s in this he's he's wearing his finest luke terry's you know what i mean like that's just to give you my specific age there and <laughs> it, it all seems too good to be true but wouldn't you know it <sighs> he's only a kidnapper and a cannibal wow science yeah <laughs> go with science <laughs> do you live around here because I, I live on aisle six I just come to the fruit section to talk to random, very good-looking people that stand near it. That was terrible. It was kind of terrible. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Have a good night. <laughs> OK, you too. You know what? I, I'm already ruining this, so I'm just going to keep going. Do you think I can have your number?
You know what? I'd fall for Sebastian Stan's <laughs> charms every time, cannibal or not. He's got my vote. Um, so, yeah, as we said, uh, Fresh, that's available on Disney Plus as of Friday. Uh, well, which is today, in fact. Um, yeah. The Alien Saga is also available on Disney Plus. So are we, as Alien fans, getting to just sit in back-to-back movies? It sounds we're, like we're, it. We're getting most of I think Predator around Predator 2. I think all the Predator movies are already on there. So I think this completes the Alien Predator-verse uh, for Disney+. Plus. So all the original Alien Quadrilogy is on there. Prometheus and Alien Covenant are now on there. Uh, Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem are now on there as well. I think Requiem gets an unfair riff sometimes. It is what mm. it is, let's be honest. Um, also uh, coming out today on Netflix, Windfall, an interesting uh, looking thriller, dramatic thriller in which Jason Siegel playing against type is a desperate man who takes, I think, an investment banker who's lost his his life savings uh, hostage okay. in his uh, in his uh, remote you know vacation home. Um, Monday, a movie that you and I love, we talked about as recently mm. as last week, coming to Disney Plus, uh, is going to be on uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Nightmare Alley. If you've been waiting for a physical disc release, I know there are aficionados still out there in the world. Um, that is that's out. Also, along along with that, on 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 shiny disc is the Matrix uh, Resurrections. And I know there are people, who, a lot of people out there who have the Matrix box set who might want that fourth one to just tuck in alongside. Oh, yeah. they, they they want the Hobbit to go after their Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? We we all we all. Yeah. And you know what? I have to say, Matrix Resurrections, I think for any fans who, you know, are looking for kind of that revisiting of a, of a 90s, you know, early 2000s kind of uh, film passion that they had with which The Matrix mm-hmm. very much falls into. I don't think you'll be disappointed with uh, The Matrix Resurrections. I really, really enjoyed it. And we'll let Keanu's shocked display do it for us. Oh, no, 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 whoa, no. whoa, what do you mean, no? You wanted this, you did this, this was your idea. It was a test, an experiment. An experiment? You put me in a tiny motor, left me to bang my head till I nearly lost my searching for you as an experiment. The exit's breaking down. He hasn't taken the pill. What? There's no time. I know, I know, he's, he's having a moment. Does he know how hard it was to hack that mirror? Still open. This, this can't be real. Now that's Yaya Adol Bateen the second there as uh, the new Morpheus. Yaya Adol Bateen the second, incidentally, is going to be starring in one of our films from next week, Ambulance, new Michael Bay movie with Isaac Gonzalez and Jake Gyllenhaal. So we look forward to that next week. Uh, I'm going to watch this again. I quite liked The Matrix Resurrections. I think people were unfairly harsh on this, and I think I really enjoyed it. I think there's a lot more buried in the meta text of of it than there should be. But I think if you are prepared to accept the film on that meta text as well as its subtext, then yes, it's better than it gets credit for. Uh, Netflix from Wednesday, one we talked about very recently, Boiling Point Bex is is coming to streaming quite quickly. Oh, Stephen Graham was up for a BAFTA this weekend. It's kind of done this sort of one-shot style take um, on a chef that is literally reaching his boiling point. I thought this was brilliant. I thought this was, again, another masterclass when it comes to acting. It was Mm -hmm. intense. It was felt very realistic as to what a kitchen would actually be like when you're working ready for like you know your your covers and your service on a high pressure Saturday evening and with someone who's not really leading the ship in the right way and uh, you know that's exactly what this movie brings for you and if you can catch it on Netflix there is a reason why he was nominated for a BAFTA it's because it was a blooming good performance it was very good wasn't it and we, we, we gave it yeah. I think we both gave it surprisingly we both gave good it surprising thumbs up I think didn't we yeah, um, yeah. then one to, one to close out the week then on streaming also also coming to streaming on Wednesday. This is one for Disney Plus again. Uh, the now Oscar nominated The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Now, you and I said, I think at the time of uh, reviewing it, that this just seemed like one that was, they make for Oscars that doesn't actually get nominated for anything mm. or certainly doesn't win and that inevitably winds up on streaming. So half of our prediction has come true. <laughs> I do. I, mean, I did. I did appreciate that a nod, a nod for Jessica Chastain was going mm. to be up there somewhere. Like her transformation, her enjoyment of this role. She completely immerses herself as Tammy Faye, and I think she does a really, really good job in it. And it's definitely worth a watch for her, not just her, but also Andrew Garfield as well. I was so. going to say, yeah, Andrew Garfield gets to gets to get to, to flex a bit as well as the. Because you remember me saying that he, I thought he was too young for that character. Then they show you the actual mm. guy at the end. You're like, yeah. he looks like a baby. Okay, yeah, Andrew Garfield works. Perfect. 
definitely. I take it back. But the eyes of, of Tammy Faye, also starring the great Cherry Jones as as Tammy Faye's mother. But we'll let, we'll let her dulcet voice. I, I I've loved her since 24. I'm not going to lie. Since she played uh, President Taylor in 24, uh, we'll let Cherry Jones's voice lead the way on this one. Have you seen this? Hmm. From the Observer, picture of you and Jim on the front. PTL's Baker diverts ministry funds for new building project. Now, what's that about? Well, you can't believe everything that you read in the newspapers, Mom. How's Fred doing? Is he settling in okay? Smoke and fire isn't just the provenance of Hell Girl. You know, when I saw that clipping with my face on it, I thought for a second that you were proud of me. I'm hearing there are articles like this in the paper every day. The secular press hates us because we're winning millions of souls for Jesus. Oh, Tammy Faye, you follow blindly. In the end, all you are is blind. It's just, I'm just not used to hearing that kind of speak from someone who doesn't have the seal of the presidency somewhere in the mm. shop, you know, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the eyes of Tammy Faye, which, I mean, I, I, lo I love a good corrupt Christian ministry story. So this one's right up my alley. You know me, I'm a John Oliver guy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well and truly in my wheelhouse. Um, so as we say, uh, that run rounds our week. Next week then, as we say, we've got that ambulance, the new Michael Bay mm. movie uh, to look forward to. We've also got Sandra O oh in the horror thriller Uma. Is it Uma? I think it's Uma. 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 Uh, we've got the worst person in the world next week. I mean, is it Miles Teller? Mm, I'm not going to spoil <laughs> it for you, but the, the movie will reveal who the worst person in the world is. I'm just saying it might, it might, might be. We don't know. It could. It, 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 I'm not saying it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it is. Just saying it could be. Uh, we've also got <laughs> last but by no means least, Escape from Mogadishu, which looks like a pretty fun Korean thriller set during like a mm. city siege. I'm looking forward to that. It looks like a lot of fun uh, next week. So that's that's a pretty banging week to look forward to next week. I'm really looking forward to Ambulance. Like Michael Bay's doing like a, a non-franchise movie again. It's been so long. I yeah. mean, outside of Pain and Gain. I, 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 oh. and I, you love that and I wasn't a fan. But yeah. Well, look, if there's anything up in the calibre of pain and gain, you've got a fan in me for sure. Um, so there we go. You've had all of your big roundup this week, all the top movies that we need to watch on whatever screen you choose. And we will be bringing you even more next week as well. But until then, for now, I've been Bex Perfect. I've been Van Connor and we shall return. <laughs>